Week two of the Whitey Bulger jury selection process. Adam Riley has been in court all day and brings us up to speed. Well, so Adam, they're down to 70 jurors. Down to 70 jurors who will be reporting back to court tomorrow. And from that 70, we'll get a pool of 18 jurors, 12 uh, who will, you know, be the primary jurors and six alternates. Uh, How quickly possible. is that likely to happen? You know, they moved a lot faster at the end of the day today than I had expected them to. So Judge Casper uh, has said that she wants to begin opening statements on Wednesday. I had thought that seemed like a long shot, but given how quickly they moved this afternoon, um, my hunch is by midday tomorrow we might have 18. All right. Well, how much of a hitch is this uh, Murderado thing going to be? Because, you know, the He's the uh, the prosecution's chief witness, but now um, the, the, there's word out that he is being protected by the state yeah. police. He's still running a criminal enterprise. Star witness for the prosecution and, who has and, admitted to participating in and 20 the, murders. Yeah, and, 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 J and J.W. Carney wants to know, wait a minute, this is all news to me. i gotta, I got to vet this. That's right. The defense has asked for a delay in opening arguments. They said, we just found out last week that the state police conducted an internal investigation based on, you know, following up on allegations that John Martirano was continuing to engage in criminal activity and that he was being protected uh, by Steve Johnson, a state police lieutenant who is a, a case agent for the government in this particular case. Um, so they're saying, we need time to look into this. The, the government's response is, well, we conducted an investigation once these allegations were raised, and we found out that John Martirano isn't currently a criminal. But J.W. Carney says it's ridiculous, since he's their star yeah, right. witness, to expect them to do due diligence. So the judge is going to take that under consideration. She's taken it under advisement, and uh, she heard that uh, those arguments this afternoon. She will rule tomorrow, I expect. All right. And what kind of... Um questions and answers of the juries, you know, what will get you on the jury and what will get you off? It was really, really interesting to watch that today. The thing that will get you off almost for sure uh, is if you have an opinion about Bulger's guilt or innocence. Uh, there was a woman today who said, well, you know, I was following the media coverage a few months back and thought he was probably guilty, but, you know, I don't feel that way anymore. I think I can keep an open mind. She was gone. They weren't going to have her on there. Another thing that kept people off the jury was acute physical or emotional distress. There were people who had medical conditions who, seen, you know, who were concerned about their ability to serve diabetes, people who had anxiety issues. Even a woman who said that she had a dog at home that couldn't use its hind legs. She got very emotional talking about how she was worried about her dog. And the defense and the prosecution agreed, don't put her on. Interestingly, though, what doesn't keep you off is a claim of sort of scheduling inconvenience. Oh. We're going to go on vacation yeah. or, you know, I'm an academic and things really pick up in September. That didn't really get people disqualified. And the other thing that doesn't get you disqualified is weird life circumstances. There was one young woman who said, well, five or six years ago in Texas, I was smoking weed with some people who I didn't really know, and someone broke in the front door and shot one of them. So I had to call 911, and then I fled the scene. The prosecution said, there's no way we can have her on the jury. She's, you know, she's clearly got a sort of a predisposition toward criminality, but the judge kept her in the jury pool. Didn't yeah, work She's not going to end up being seen. This is I think that's a good hunch. Yeah. <laughs> good. All right, Adam Riley, we look forward to more. Thanks, Thanks. Emily. Bye. All right, and a reminder to stay tuned for WGBH for continuing coverage of the Whitey Bulger trial right here on Greater Boston, as well as on 89.7 WGBH Radio and at WGBHnews.org.